Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Avi and this channel is about work-life balance, technology, and faith. Today I'm going to give you a complete account of how I was able to create and edit a virtual choir video. If you want to add a little surprise and originality to your online get-togethers and you have talented singers in your audience, if you have been having some group singing in on-site gatherings but you are constrained now with the lockdown, then this video is for you. You can still have singing through a virtual choir. It has worked for me basically with three essential things. First of all, I have a group of enthused friends sharing my interest for a surprise number in an upcoming online get-together. Second is, I have a little knowledge of editing through Final Cut Pro. And third, I have a huge amount of resources in YouTube about creating and editing a virtual choir because a quarantine choir has become popular during the pandemic. So if that sounds good to you, then let's get into it. Well, first of all, it started with just one inspiration. 10 days before the actual online get-together, I woke up remembering that a friend of mine forwarded a virtual choir. It's a children's choir singing memories. And I loved it, but actually, halfway through the song, I started looking in YouTube for the editor who could have uploaded and explained the way that he was able to edit this choir. So I was able to find it, but unfortunately, the editor was using Adobe Premiere and I was used to Final Cut Pro, so I put it aside and I said, someday, I'll look for another choir and the editor is using the software I also use for editing. So now you can see that my interest is really less on the singing and more on the editing aspect. So 10 days before the get together, I recalled those two videos and I messaged some friends and I told each one I could edit a quarantine virtual choir and I invited them, would you like to sing in this virtual choir? So basically everyone, all of these friends of mine have never sung together. So the first reply came from my friend Ellie. She asked, what kind of performance do we need? Then the most experienced one, who is Bing, she said, why don't we just do an a cappella? One person starts singing, then the next one follows. And then if that person has an instrument, then most probably we can use that also. So again, I'm not a singer and as an editor, I thought, how can I make the songs, the singing coincide if I don't have a common musical background? So I gave them this, um, copies of virtual choirs and I told them, you know, this is how they would do it. So they would just listen with their earphones to the music and what I would hear would only be their voices. So they agreed and the next dilemma now is what song do they sing? And I shared to them some of these virtual choirs again and I, that all of this I saw in YouTube and somehow I recommended Seasons of Love because I, I just like the singing and Lean On Me and Ellie came up with a Viber survey and the winner was Lean On Me. And you know, honestly, I thought it was really a very good choice. I realized that with uh, our group of friends who have not been together for a long time because of the pandemic, then it really is a good song because it speaks of unconditional friendship. So there is this line in the song of Bill Withers, that uh, song Lean On Me, and it says, I'll be your friend, I'll help you carry on. So that's really a nice song and I was so happy that my friends chose it. So the next step was for all the singers to meet online in a Zoom meeting, which I hosted. And there they had to decide which person is going to sing what, and when are they going to submit the music, and who will sing the guide singing. And that was about seven days before the get together. And then six days before the get together, Kat was able to give everyone a comprehensive minutes of the meeting and some guidelines. And with that comprehensive guidelines, I only gave just one correction or one suggestion. I told them that since I have research on this, I told them that if it's possible that they only record in 30 frames per second. The experts in YouTube were saying that it will be an editing nightmare if you receive the recording in different frames per second. So I just told them, I don't know how it will work, but basically that's somehow the idea that I got. So everybody decided on 30 frames per second, whether they are recording on their smartphones or using a real camera. So also six days before the online get together, Ellie sent her guide singing. Basically the guide singing is that somebody has to sing it and with your earphone, then you follow it. Because I think that guide singing will help when people will come in or I don't know, again, I'm not a singer. So it's just that it is a guideline that we followed because of those experiences and research in YouTube. And right away, Bang and Tal were able to submit their recording. So while waiting for the other singers, I used Canva.com in order to create a template of eight singers. 
So one person backed out, so now I had to redo it for seven singers. And then after I have done that, one singer was backing out because she says, I'm really not good in singing. So I assured her that I'll just lower your voice and you can still sing just to really just uh, to entertain the others in that online get together that we would have. And four days before the online get together, I asked everyone if they would like to see the draft I edited. So since that was a work day, I understood that they did not have the time and only Kat was available and she was happy with it. And she was humble enough to say, you know, Avic, in that last part, I think you can lower or really minimize or just put to zero the volume of my last sustained nose. So I thought that really quite humble of her to accept that. I don't actually know if it's an error, but she just said that it's actually much sustained than it should be. So three days before the event, I got all recordings and I put them right away immediately in one file and I saved them without the background music. And that I found from this YouTuber called Mina Studio. I'll put the link here. And two days before the event, I placed effects like film clips, short film clips, and photos, and that is through my subscription to Envato Elements, and I put the link below if you're interested. And one day before the event, I was already rehearsing how I will show the video or play the video in Ecom Live, which was also the software I'm using, and then Zoom meeting. And it was a huge learning experience, and I hope you could watch it in this link. And just in case you're using mobile and you cannot click the end screen, I will also put the video link in the video description below. I hope you like it as much as I did. And if you like this video, let me know by liking it and I will know that I will have more of this. Subscribe to this channel and also click the notification bell so that you will always know when I am uploading.